Yo, what's going on everybody? It's Friday. Friday, this crazy week is over. It is March 24th. We actually had a positive close. This was the second weekly positive close. Like amid all this turmoil and everything, you know, that's been nonstop about bank runs and bank failures and this and that. Uh, we actually had a second positive week, uh, weekly uh, close in the stock market. You know, there was news today that was online everywhere about uh, uh, bank deposits dropped by $100 billion, which I don't know, that that's like one of the biggest declines. I have to go back and see uh, what they said or I'll check the Fed data, but it was, it was a big one. But what they don't tell you is that $230 billion went into the Fed's uh, reverse repo facility. So, like, they don't tell you that part. And one thing I got to say is, like, if the economy w was doing real bad, I mean, you wouldn't see, we're, we may be losing deposits at banks, but they're, they're, they're in the system. I mean, the Fed, they're, on, they're moving to the Fed maybe out of, per, uh, uh, you know, perceived or, or uh, realistic caution. I don't think the caution is realistic. I think a lot of this, like I've been saying, has been completely, completely exacerbated by the media and the hysteria that they put out about this. But I mean, a 230 billion increase in the RRP facility, you know, that's double what the drain in deposits. So I mean, you wouldn't see that. And by the way, loans increased in the week ending March uh, 17th, last, uh, what was it, last Friday, loans increased by 64 billion. Now, some of that was due to the fact that um, a, a thrift institution uh, converted to a commercial bank, so their assets went onto that week's data. But still, I mean, you know, we're not seeing, I mean, we're seeing the kind of panic in the media. We're seeing this kind of intraday panic in the markets when somebody says something or there's some mention of a bank, and we, and we are seeing, I will not deny this, uh, that bank stocks have been hammered, and I think, they, they, I think they've been hammered um, out of sheer just emotion and panic. I don't think, I, and frankly, I do think that these are still great opportunities and great buys, especially given the magnitude of the fall in some of these stocks that we've seen. But you know the picture now. I mean, look, we came into this year where there was virtually a 100% uh, prediction for recession. Uh, the Atlanta Fed's GDP now forecast is, I think I said yesterday, they're looking at 3.2% growth. I mean, that's, that's higher than the average growth basically we've seen for the last 40 years, which has been around 2.5% growth. I was the only one who was saying, you know, there's not going to be a recession. Fiscal flows are very, very strong. We're seeing, I mean, the deposits are there, folks. They're just moving to a different facility right now because everyone has been triggered by this and everyone's in a panic. There may be some institutions that, I don't know, have, have been poorly run. I also think that, uh, I mean, that you know, that could happen in any industry. There's also been, I think, really bad leadership on the part of, you know, our policymakers, specifically Powell and Yellen. And I think it should be obvious now that raising interest rates to squash inflation is a totally bogus and ridiculous and, and completely useless endeavor. As a matter of fact, it, it's the opposite. And I've said for a long time now that inflation would actually be lower than where it is if the Fed were not on this, you know, ridiculous course and this orthodoxy of raising rates as a means of bringing down inflation. Next week, I said I'm going to have on my podcast, uh, Randy Ray, he wrote a real big article about this. And we're going to talk to him about that. You know, he's a, he's a super expert MMT one of the, one of, what I call one of the founders of MMT. Great guy, Randy Ray. So that's supposed to happen next Friday. But anyway, uh, I got to run. That's the update for today. You know, like I've been saying, 
you got to buy these panics. And it, oh, here's the other thing that I forgot to mention. <laughs> the, right now, Fed fund futures are now pricing in four, or that, four rate cuts through the end of this year, okay? Uh, no rate hike in May, no rate hike in June, but then a cut in July, a cut in September, a cut in November, and a cut in December, 25 basis points each. So now it's priced again. So we'll see if these monetarist zombies, who, you know, they do have sway over the market in the short term, they don't have it in the, oh, in the bigger picture of the fundamentals and the fiscal flows and stuff I talk about. But, it, you know, th this has got to be the bottom because now they're looking at this and they're all, so for stocks and bonds, with four rate cuts priced in already, I mean, come on. And it just shows you the ridiculousness of, because the markets bottomed in October, last October, when I told you. I also told you, by the way, and I maybe even told you this last October, that on February 15th of 2023, that would be the peak in the fiscal flows, and we'd get a pullback based on March and April tax drain. Now, the March tax drain, uh, it was really nothing. April will be something. But al along the way, I've also said, you know what? Fiscal flows are so strong that if we get a change in perception about monetary policy, the tax drain may have very little effect. But I don't want to get over excited because we still have the debt ceiling situation to deal with it and that's a real thing and I've been saying that's a real thing because if that isn't uh, resolved then that does increase the probability of recession I mean uh, and I've said that I'm on record as saying that if that gets resolved we got nothing to worry about but if that doesn't get resolved then you know we got other things that we got to talk about Anyway, that's it for today. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you. Bye.